A great recipe for poetry success is to um, go and sit down by a window, uh, read a poem, have a cup of tea and then look out the window. <laughs> that is my recommendation of the best way to enjoy a poem. Uh, so you read it, you have a nice cup of tea and then you, you don't necessarily think about it like analyse it like you would at school. Um, sort of pulling it apart. Okay, that's not how I do it. You don't pull it apart line by line, but you let it percolate. You like you would when you read a nice quote on the internet. The poem goes in and it kind of swirls around and you drift off with it for a while and um, you it takes you on a small journey and um, I think that's really, really beautiful. And somebody who came on one of my workshops recently said that after they read the poem that we shared in the workshop, uh, the next day they were out walking in nature and they found everything so beautiful and they were really looking at the trees and the leaves and the sound of the wind and and we both agreed that reading poetry makes one more receptive to beauty in other corners of the day and um, and so aren't we lucky to have poetry in our lives. Hello and welcome to my channel my name is Emma Mills and today we're going to be talking about World Book Day and reviewing three or four really amazing poetry books that you can hopefully bring into your life a bit of extra joy and happiness um, not just on World Book Day but on all the other days as well. If you follow my blog over at Emma Mills London you'll, you'll know that I'm a really big poetry fan I read poetry every day and I um, read poetry as part of my work I am visiting lecturer at Westminster University for poetry therapy on the psychology degree syllabus and I include poetry in my meditation tuition with others all the time. There are so many reasons why poetry goes really well with meditation, but that's a that's a story for another day. I get so many letters from readers and people who come to my classes asking for recommendations of poetry books, things that they can have at home to enjoy for themselves or with their family. And so I wanted to share a little, a brief spin through some of my favourite poetry books. So first one is, it's called Soul Food by, uh, Soul Food, Nourishing Poems for Starved Minds, edited by Neil Astley and Pamela Robertson Pierce. The back reads, Soul Food is a feast of thoughtful poems to stir the mind and feed the spirit. Drawn from many traditions ranging from Rumi, Kabir and Blake, to Rilke, Emily Dickinson and Mary Oliver, as well as many lesser known writers from all periods and places. The anthology opens with a series of poems on human life and spiritual sustenance, starting with Rumi, This Being Human is a Guest House, if you've ever heard that poem it's really wonderful, and it goes on. So there's some really fantastic poets in here. So this book, if you are interested in yoga or meditation or mindfulness or if you are interested in spirituality or discovering your spirituality if you're interested in the meaning of life and existential inquiry you will love this little anthology the poems in there are really fantastic there's a great one in there from Thich Nhat Hanh the, uh, the mindfulness master my favorite poems that's in here um, is uh, I've, I've taken this book so many places uh, I've really, really read it thoroughly. And the good thing about a poetry book is you can never finish it because they're always new. You always discover something new when you revisit a poem. For example, here we go. Sometimes a Man by Rainer Maria Rilke, which is translated from the German by Robert Bly. Robert Bly is also a fantastic poet. Sometimes a man stands up during supper and walks outdoors and keeps on walking because of a church that stands somewhere in the east. And his children say blessings on him as if he were dead. And another man who remains inside his own house dies there, inside the dishes and in the glasses, so that his children have to go far out into the world toward that same church which he forgot. Oh, isn't that amazing? Oh, I really love that poem. So... Um, leave me a comment underneath. What does that poem say to you? Sometimes a man, Raina Maria Rilke. It reminds me, if you have also heard the poem, which is in this book as well, Jane Hirschfield Tree, it is unwise to let a redwood grow next to your house. Um, at some point you'll have to choose, I'm just paraphrasing here, this, this great calm being or this clutter of soup pots and books. And for me, this poem, A Man Stands, Sometimes a Man by Rainer Maria Rilke and the Jane Hirschfeld Tree poem, they're both poems which say, um, at some point in life, 
we have to turn to the great calm being, to the big immensity within. Here in Re at Rainer Maria Rilke's poem, he refers to it as the church that stands somewhere in the east. Uh, and I interpret that in my version of it, I'm just sharing my, my thoughts, as, um, as to mean that the spiritual path, uh, at some point one has to go on the spiritual path. Um, and if we don't, it's something we leave to our children to do. Uh, so I, I find this um, very, very, very beautiful. Interesting spiritual poems. Soul Food, Nourishing Poems for Starved Minds, Neil Astley, Pamela Robertson Pierce. My next book I would recommend is One River, Many Creeks. And this is poems, this is a, an anthology of poems again, poems from all around the world chosen by Valerie Bloom, who is a really fantastic poet. Um, and this, the, uh, but the back is simple. The back says, a fantastic collection of multicultural poems spanning continents and centuries. And then underneath there's a, um, a small poem which reads, from one tree, which is the name of the poem. One tree, so many leaves. One tree, one river, so many creeks. All are going to one sea. And that is Dobru Rivales, I hope I'm saying that correctly, from Suriname. And underneath the caption is, unusual little windows into other cultures full of illuminating observations. And that's exactly how I would describe this fantastic book, One River, Many Creeks. Um, the, the poems in here are um, varied. There are some poems about nature. There are poems about moving to different countries, poems about um, growing up, about childhood, about family. And for me, one thing I really like about this anthology, although many of the poems like a lot of poems do, um, they, they definitely resonate at a deep level to something very, very essential and wonderful. On the surface, they're playful. A lot of these poems are very playful and some of them feel as though they've been written for or by children almost. They've got this kind of playful, charming feel to them. I'll try and find a... Um, um, well, there's a really interesting poem in here called Square Peg, just a very small one here. I'll just give, the, give you that read. I was a knight of the round table. I killed dragons for my livelihood. I was offered voluntary redundancy, for today's dragons have all been given knighthoods. That's Debjani Chatterjee from India. Underneath it says which country the person is from. That's an interesting poem. Won't go into that just today. Um... Oh, here's a fantastic one. Grace Nichols, Guyana. And I, again, I won't read it all, but I'll just give you a few lines so you can get a taste for it. When you look at a painting, if this is the name of the poem. When you look at a painting, let the dancing begin. Move eyes around the frame, both gilded and plain. Then let the light take you in to all that's within. And, and it goes on. So I would really recommend this book for adults and children, families, one river, many creeks, um, such a, a, ref a refreshing perspective and so, so charming. So this is what I would recommend here in my second book. My next book I recommend is A Survival Kit for Modern Times, 101 Poems to Get You Through the Day and Night, edited by Daisy Goodwin. So Daisy Goodwin makes quite a few of these small square little poetry anthologies really really easy to carry around in your bag or just to have on the side at home and the back reads um uh, the back here we just have um a small little poem written on the back it says two cures for love don't see him don't phone or write a letter or the easy way get to know him better <laughs> which is wendy cope also really good so this one, 101 Poems to Get You Through the Night Reads, this is an anthology designed to help you get through the stresses of modern life for rapid and effective relief around the clock without side effects. Try a poem. For whatever time of day, you can be sure that some poet has been there too, and isn't that just the case? And so as you flip through this book, um, Daisy has organised it in such a way that there are, uh, again, mixed poets and mixed types of poems, and they cover different um, conundrums friendship, getting a job, getting out of bed, 
children. And here's one I quite like. It's quite regularly anthologized, this one. It's called Ithaca. As you set out for Ithaca, hope your road is a long one, full of adventure, full of discovery. Keep Ithaca always in your mind. Arriving there is what you're destined for. But don't hurry the journey at all. Better if it lasts for years. So you're old by the time you reach the island. Wealthy, with all you've gained on the way. Not expecting Ithaca to make you rich. Ithaca gave you the marvellous journey. Without her, you wouldn't have set out. She has nothing left to give you now. And if you find her poor, Ithaca won't have fooled you. Wise as you have become, so full of experience. You'll have understood by then what these Ithacas mean. That's C.P. Cavafy, a Greek poet, I, I think. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. So there's a lot to unpack there as well, which we won't do today, but really, really great book. And some of the poems in here are very small, if you can see here. I've just opened it here on credit lines by um, I would live all my life in nonchalance and insouciance were it not for making a living, which is rather a nuisance by Odgan Nash. I really love that one. So it's a great little poem. Uh, survival kit for modern times. Lots of small little poems organised by places in the day where you might need to pick me up. Really fantastic little book. The last book that I'm recommending is A Nature Poem for Every Night of the Year, edited by J. McMorland Hunter. And so again, a mixed anthology of poets and poems, but organised by days, so, so you've got one for every night of the year, and it takes you through the seasons, so all the way from winter through spring, summer, autumn, and the poems are really fantastic, and they're great for bedtime. Now, I don't generally, for me personally, read a lot of poems at bedtime because I find poetry so exciting and invigorating and um, uh, it makes me feel very whimsical. But these poems are very lovely for bedtime and um, I think because of the nature element they make you feel very grounded. Um, where in the daytime you can go into a world of ideas and meetings and emails and concepts and talking and other people and storylines and whatnot. Nature brings you back to something real, something very grounding. So this poetry book is really fantastic. I'm just opening it up now on the um, the, the poem for the 3rd of March. It's a poem for every day, of the every night rather. Uh, it came with the year's first crocus. 3rd of March, W.E. Henley, 1849-1903. to So this is It Came with the Year's First Crocus. It came with the year's first crocus in a world of winds and snows because it would, because it must, because of life and time and last. And a year's first crocus served my turn as well as the year's first rose. The march rack hurries and hectors, the march dust heaps and blows, the primrose flouts the daffodil, and here's the patient violet still. And the year's first crocus brought me luck. So hey for the year's first rose. W. E. Henley, 1849-1903. It came at the year's first crocus. And I don't know what time of year you're watching this or where you are in the world, but certainly here in the UK at this time of year, early March, we're starting to see the first crocuses. We're seeing snowdrops, the daffodils, the um, hyacinths. All of the lovely spring bulbs popping out this time of year. Uh, it's really, really magical. I love those first few lines. It came with the year's first crocus in a world of winds and snows because it would, because it must, because of life and time and lust, because it would, because it must. How wonderful. So lovely. And so all of these poems are set through the year, a nature poem for every night of the year. I think you'll really enjoy it if you treat yourself to a copy of this. I was really lucky. Somebody bought me this for my birthday last year. Really good book. Okay, so there we have four mixed poetry anthologies that you could keep at home to inspire your wellness practice. I like to think that if you keep a poetry book on the kitchen table or by your bed or just in your handbag if it's a small one, you could pick them out at different times of day and just read a little poem. 
Um, a great recipe for poetry success is to um, go and sit down by a window, uh, read a poem, have a cup of tea and then look out the window. <laughs> that is my recommendation of the best way to enjoy a poem. Uh, so you read it, you have a nice cup of tea and then you, you don't necessarily think about it like analyse it like you would at school. Um, sort of pulling it apart. Okay, that's not how I do it. You don't pull it apart line by line, but you let it percolate. You like you would when you read a nice quote on the internet. The poem goes in and it kind of swirls around and you drift off with it for a while and um, you it takes you on a small journey and um, I think that's really, really beautiful. And somebody who came on one of my workshops recently said that after they read the poem that we shared in the workshop, uh, the next day they were out walking in nature and they found everything so beautiful and they were really looking at the trees and the leaves and the sound of the wind and and we both agreed that reading poetry makes one more receptive to beauty in other corners of the day and um, and so aren't we lucky to have poetry in our life? Okay, that's enough from me today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week. Happy World Book Day. Do get into poetry. Head to the link below to um, read more about uh, poetry books that I've recommended on my blog, Emma Mills London, and subscribe for more videos. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.